Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds from 3dgameman.com. The next question is about overclocking. Now, to be honest, this is a very difficult question for me to answer in this type of Q&A video without any aids like pictures or diagrams, but let me give it a shot. One of the first things you need is an excellent motherboard, CPU, and memory combination. Now, what is that exactly? Well, there are literally hundreds of different combinations out there. I can't list them all. How do you find that which one is best? Well, you hit tech sites and uh, read their reviews and uh, hit their forums and you will definitely be able to find out what that combination is. Now once you've got that combination you need to enter the motherboard's BIOS. Do so by pressing the delete key or F8 key that's going to depend on the motherboard. Once you're in there go into the advanced chipset area or the tweaker or overclocker area and once you're in there and there are a few things like the CPU multiplier or front side bus, memory speed and memory timing that you need to worry about. Now, what is all that stuff? Okay, I'll make it really simple. Let's just say your multiplier is 10 and your front side bus is 200. 10 times 200 is 2000, that's 2 gigahertz. Let's say that is your default CPU speed and you want to overclock it to, let's say, 4 gigahertz. I just use that as, as an example. It's pretty extreme, but let me use that as an example. Um, so let's just say you want to leave your multiplier at 10 and increase your front side bus to 400, that will give you 4,000 or 4 gigahertz. So now you're probably getting the idea of how to start overclocking your CPU. You could also lower your uh, multiple CPU multiplier and then increase your front side bus. And the advantage to that is that you have um, a faster memory speed and that will in turn, of course, increase performance. But you have to balance one or the other. Um, you have to find a sweet spot there, uh, the best multiplier with the best front side bus combination. As an example, um, I'll use my um, system. I have an Intel Q6600 processor, I have a multiplier of 9, and a front side bus of 390 or 1560 megahertz DDR, and that equals 3.5 gigahertz. And also the other thing to take into consideration is the memory timing. Now, sometimes you can do a one-to-one -to, -one, uh, to the front side bus. So if your front side bus is 400, uh, your memory can be at uh, 400 as well. If maybe the front side bus is too high, you've got dividers, so you can decrease your memory speed. Or sometimes your front side bus is too slow, and you can use multipliers to increase that. Also, there's memory timings. And quite frankly, at first, I would recommend you leave those to automatic. Um, now... The other very, very important thing is, is voltages. You got to figure out what the best voltage is for your CPU, memory, north bridge, and south bridge. I can't tell you what that is because it varies from CPU to memory to motherboard, um, but you need to find that out. That's crucial. You need always to have a higher voltage than default to get any kind of sensible overclock. And remember, you always need to have excellent case ventilation and either a really good CPU air cooler or some kind of water cooling. I hope this answers your question. Keep your questions coming.